one of the things that I was thinking about over sabbatical and then this year was in the context of my college classroom and who exactly am I to my students. That's different from when I was in high school or when I was working with second and third graders uh, or teaching uh, Sunday school to seventh graders when my main job was not to have them lock each other in the lockers. That was pretty big at that point. Uh, right now, that's not really what I have to worry about. I'm not trying to protect them from each other, um, but I am trying to give them still a sense that there is somebody there who's looking out for them. I went this year back to going by Professor Hauk instead of Anita in all my classes with the students that I know and my advisees, the majors in the chair thing. I still go by my first name. But it was a big decision for me and I talked to people because uh, I was wondering if some of the feedback that I was getting from students was that I was trying too hard to get them to like me and to be their equal and we're all learning together. And especially since I mostly teach first year and very often students in their first semester in college, some of the advice I got was they need to know that there's somebody there who is going to be willing to be a guide for them. Uh, and so while there has to be a respect and a recognition that we're equal, as you know, even that from a Christian point of view, human rights point of view, whatever, there's all kinds of ways that they're equal, but I have a responsibility to them. They do not have to be. Um, they do not need to be merciful to me. I hope they will be, but that's not their job. Their job is to learn and to grow, and I hope grow in virtue too, but I have to take charge about the dynamics of the class. I have to be prudent in choosing the text that we use, and if I get feedback that something's not working, I have to be the one to make the decision we're going to change things or not, and I'm going to explain things or not. So I don't think, I'm not trying to be more authoritarian, but I am trying, somebody used the analogy, I'm not sure it's a great one, but they need to know there's a surgeon in the OR. And this is my OR, and I'm going to make sure that we're all okay. Of course, when I'm saying I'm teaching my kids, my stepkids, it's because I care about them. And I'm thinking about them and having a full life, and also where they're going to put me in a nursing home. When I'm thinking in class, I'm thinking mostly about are they going to be able to be respectful to other religions in the world? Are they going to be good citizens? Are they going to be lifelong learners? Will they be unintimidated when they come up against difference and will have the ability to reflect on themselves, to be self-aware, and to engage with people who are different? But then there's this other side that I always had with my kids, and can I be a little honest about not be maternal to my students, who are all women, by the way. That shapes my context in a lot of ways. Um, but there is a sense of the kind of being firm to show love there also translates into the classroom. I assume that you know they won't take me out of my last class feed first, but oh, you never know. Um, but I mean, again, and so I think it's important for us to see, for humans and community to see each other as sometimes teachers. But I think I really would like to be able to be student more and more of the time, and maybe right when I feel as though I have something to say that hasn't been said and that I might be able to do an especially good job of saying. Um, but when I'm not in the classroom, um, yeah, I hope I'll shut up a little bit more. And, and not that teaching isn't listening to, but it does you know, involve that this is my OR and this is my responsibility and it's mine. And to be able to sit back a little bit more and, uh, and absorb more without being the one who ultimately has to make all the decisions about when do we move on and all that. So some of the, the decisions of teaching I won't mind giving up probably uh, to immerse myself more in some of the subject matter of what I love to teach. Most every night I think about how to go today and I review the things that went well and I review the places I failed. It's almost like Ben Franklin's diaries, you know, about those, like he would choose a virtue and work on it and he had his little calendar he's like, okay, Monday, not so good. Tuesday. It's kind of like putting stars when you're potty training somebody, not that I had to do that. Um, and he really went through that very systematically. And I would like to say, I mean, it would be big for me to, maybe by the end of the year, to have stars on mercy most days to feel that I'm making progress, because I'm not going to be done. And one of the things that I've asked of Wabash was help me be closer to my aspiration of being an excellent teacher. Um, but, and I, you know, so that's an asymptote. I'm not going to wake up one day and say, I'm excellent. I mean, I already won the teaching award at my school. I'm done. I can't get anything else from them. But 
uh, when I can find myself that most days I can see myself succeeding most of the time and the failures are small and I do apologize to my students when those happen and I'm pleased that I've learned how to do that. That was something else I worked on. Come, come, um, so yeah, to have that, I think to be able to make that progress on the virtues that I'm working on right now, that'll be great. Because it also is going to mean I'm a better person and a better Christian. And, you know, it's selfish, but that's part of, you know, what my work on earth is also, is to become the best person I can be.